Corey Levin was held out more precautionary than anything. Don't anticipate that being anything long term. I uh, would imagine he's going to play in the game. And Arden Key was held out. He tweaked his hamstring yesterday. Don't think that's bad. Hopefully get him back next week. But um, just a minor, minor hamstring tweak. Really, other than that, um, all the same everywhere else from the same guys. Nothing really new today outside of uh, those two guys that didn't practice. So uh, not a whole lot to say about the injury. It's pretty straightforward today. Chavius went off. Yeah, this is some kind of shoulder. I don't know how. Uh, I, I didn't seem bad, but those are things you wait and see. And um, but it, I don't think I don't think it was bad. But we'll see. As far as Arden goes, uh, until this, how do you think his camp had kind of gone? I know you guys have worked him a lot. In yeah. The first group to get him ready in case he was available. How's he's he had a good that? camp. He's had a good camp. He's been physical. Uh, he's rushed well. Uh, really pleased with where he's at. Um, you know, I think he's he's solidified himself as a as a legitimate outside backer that can that can play on all three downs, and he's done a really nice job. So uh, happy with where he's at. In the end of practice yesterday, Traylon came down. He's a bull champion and went in back out there today, of course. But it seems like we see that kind of regularly, and I'm wondering if anything like he, he falls awkwardly sometimes. Sometimes yeah. he does, yeah. Um, I mean, it sure seemed like there is, because Tua was doing some falling practice, I guess. So I, I've, I've heard that you can maybe coach some of that. But I think the biggest thing with, with Trey is that when receivers go up for those balls and, and they go and turn, they land on their side a lot. And so he's really landed on the same hip like three times from the OTAs early in camp and then again yesterday. So uh, it just hurts like hell uh, at the end of the day. He, he fights through it. I, I appreciate his, his toughness. And he's come back both days that he's, he's landed on it. But those things hurt. You know, the hit landing on your hip doesn't feel very good. So, um, but good to see him bounce back. I mean, as he's a big, strong dude, and when he goes up in the air, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of body falling down. So, um, sometimes the ground hurts a lot. Is there something specific you were trying to get out of the situational drills today? It seemed like you were hammering sometimes. Yeah, we worked uh, we worked a little bit more red zone today. Um, worked uh, worked two different two minute situations. Uh, one at the beginning of practice as an end of half. Um, and then one at the uh, uh, end of the game was the last two minutes. So just two different two-minute drives. Just need a little more work in that area. I'm glad we got some in the game the other day, but um, that's just operational stuff that we're just trying to make sure we get enough reps of um, before the training camp period is over. So uh, a little emphasis on the two-minute today. How's the uh, swing tackle battle going through this camp? You've got you know, several guys. They're competing for one or two spots on the roster. How's that shaped up? Uh, it's been the best way to put it. It's been competitive. I mean, those guys have had good and bad moments as, as all battles go in training camp. Um, I think JD's really start to come on um, in the last week. He's done some really nice things. Uh, John has he started the offseason well. I think when the pads came on, he sort of dipped, and now he sort of fought his way back in uh, into the battle. So he's done a nice job. It's competitive uh, with Leroy as well and Jerron. I mean, we got we got guys that have played football that have done good things. Um, this game will go, you know, it'll be a big part, final part of the evaluation for that those tackle spots. Um, need to see those guys play and play well uh, when they get an opportunity. So, uh, yeah, as best I can say, it's just it's been competitive and there's been there's been good and bad by all of them and there's been ups and downs. And so, uh, I'm looking for someone to go grab a hold of those jobs. Kind of evaluation of Chance Campbell, you know, before you saw him, and then, then kind of what, what have you noticed about him? You know, not, not as much as I would have, you know, for as much as he's shown up. I mean, I, I, he's really done a nice job. But you see, just that he flies around. He plays fast. He reads. He diagnoses. He's, he plays with some instinct, um, and then he's violent to the ball. You know, he's made a bunch of tackles and hits on the quarterback, and he just keeps showing up. And I think that that's the best compliment you can give a guy in training camp is they just keep finding ways to open your eyes and you go, wow, what a play. Nice play chance, nice play chance. And it just sort of happens every day. Um, so that's his, the consistency of him making plays has been what's the most uh, encouraging thing is that it wasn't a, a one-time thing and he's not very much dipped at all. He's sort of just kept his arrow up all the way through and, and keeps showing up. So uh, really been a nice camp for him. How many roster spots do you think are up for grabs here with a couple of days to go? And then traditionally there's probably you know, there's probably four or five real spots up for grabs that are that are being competed for, um, and it's pretty standard every year. I think you're always looking. It's always those those last four to six players, uh, depending on position, and so um, those are the things that we'll be really keyed in on over this this last game here and, and getting ready to make decisions. Um, again, special teams plays a huge role in all that too. Potential to use 
one or two of the IR spots that you can use on Tuesday as one of your one or two of your eight? Sure, those are always conversations, you know, and you see where guys are at. Um, guys that can return, that could go on IR and return to play. You know, that's obviously part of the process too. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's always going to be part of the conversation is how do those spots come into play and where do they factor? Um, and most, most years they factor some way, shape, or form. Um, so I would think that that's uh, something we'll explore as we get closer to the cut down. Easier now because you don't have to get them through the 53? It, it's much easier now that yeah, you used to have to cut a guy and tell him you're going to bring him back and have a handshake agreement and usually a veteran player that you bring him back. Um, to carry a guy through to then put him on IR, so that that's a that's a benefit being able to do that this year. Yeah, um, two things. I mean, there's there's a there's a run game part of it when they're rotating the physicality, being able to set the edge and, and play physical in a run game. Both of those guys do that well, um, and then there's the pass rush part of it is where they where they coming in to spell um, Arden and Harold. Uh, and then what does that look like? Are they are they being productive? Obviously, Jalen's had production in the games, sacking a quarterback. Um, but so far, I've been really pleased with the way those guys have played, Jalen in particular. Um, and Weave's really been really physical against the run in the games, which has been good to see. So I think we got a good mix of guys there um, in those three and four spots at the outside linebacker position. I was talking about Rashad yesterday. He said he kind of plays best when he's, when he's angry. Mm -hmm. um, how do you get that level? Outside of like him. Yeah, it's our job as coaches is to find a find a button or two that needs to be pushed, and I think Denard does an excellent job at finding those buttons uh, when necessary. Um, but yeah, there's a it's a it's a knowing the person and knowing what 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 gets them going and doing that as much as possible. Percentage on it, but when you're evaluating those last couple of spots, how much comes down to what you see Sunday versus what you've seen this last month and a half? Uh, it's a it's just a, a part of the evaluation, so it's a. It's a, how are they in the, in the meeting rooms? How do they conduct themselves in the building? What's their interactions like with the position group? How do they perform practice to practice? How do they perform when it counts, when there's a game? So um, all those things matter. There is definitely a weighted emphasis on the game because it's football. It's, you get to see them actually go make plays and um, see if what you see in practice translates into a live action football game. And uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a totality when you're looking at making a roster cut. It's very rarely based on one game. Um, most of the time, there's going to be a, quite a bit of input from the entire course of, of the offseason and training camp. So, um, but the games do, they're important. So you want to see guys play well. This is technically the last, uh, today, today's the last open day of practices. Mm -hmm. Is it the last day of camp? And if so, what changes next week as far as the schedule? Yeah, this happen? is the last day of training camp um, in terms of training camp schedule. Um, we will, you really don't have much next week. You have, you know, two, three days you use to, start the prep on, on Chicago, but um, you, we'll transition more into our regular season cadence next week uh, for practice. Uh, it's still not going to be exact because it's, it's, it's not the same. You're not, it's not a full week. Um, and then those guys have that mandatory time off on, on the weekend. So um, it'll be starting to transition into regular season spot. This is our last official training camp day. We'll still be in pads um, for sure once, maybe twice next week. We'll see where we're at. But um, the training camp portion, per se, is, is over, and we're, we're transitioning into regular season, getting ready to play. A lot was made of Will, you know, the adjustments that you guys have made in his mechanics and that he's done. As part of that, does he also kind of have to relearn now that, the, now that he's throwing differently? Does he also kind of have to relearn, OK, the ball may go faster or further here, that sort of thing? Um, you'd have to ask him. He could tell you more in detail. That's that's a kind of quarterback to quarterback thing. Um, nothing that I've noticed would make it feel that way to me, uh, to my eye. But that's more of a uh, probably question for Will when you ask him about his mechanics. But um, no, I haven't seen anything that would be that would lead me to believe that there's an effect, positive or negative, to that. I think he's found his way through it. That first period of offense didn't, didn't end great, except for the penalty that set you up for the field goal. Yeah. The the two minute period didn't end well. No. What did you think of those two? In those uh, not, not what we're looking for. Obviously, you'd like to um, find yourself in, in position to go score points in a two-minute drill. Um, our defense, when they want to pin their ears back and rush, is hard to block. Um, they're, that, our front's good. Um, they've proven challenging for us. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'd certainly like to see better than what we saw today, but that's the ebbs and flows of camp. We've had some good drives, and we've had some uh, ones that went the defense's way. So as the head coach, I get to be excited that the defense played well, because they did. Um, but yeah, it was I'd like to have gotten more from that. I think. Kenneth Murray, all you thought he would be when you got to him in. Yeah, absolutely. He's um, he is 
big and strong and fast and physical, and, and he plays football the way that linebackers are meant to play football. And um, he's he fits well with the system. He's fits what Denard wants from from the defense and, and the aggressiveness that he plays with. I've been really, really pleased with everything that he's brought from off the field to, to his performance on the field. Um, he's had a really nice camp. Have you seen any progress from Jay Singer? Is he one of those rookies that sometimes can hit a wall in camp and just kind of Oh no, I've seen tremendous progress. He's he you know, his he's goes back and forth. He's got good days and bad days like all young players, but um, really yesterday even in like one on ones it's more it's the technical thing is you see him throwing hands and he's landing strikes and he's just doing things that he hadn't done as much of. So uh, I see sort of kind of continuous slow improvement from him, you know, things that maybe as you're watching practice doesn't feel the same um, to your eyes when you watch like this kind of looks like JC's out there still. But uh, I think his improvement's been been really, really good and, and steady, which is what you're hoping for. Coach, you said it's, it's a combination of things when you're evaluating, you know, those last few roster spots. But have you seen a guy make a team based on a really strong last preseason game before in your career? Or yeah, it does happen. You know, if a guy really shows up uh, on special teams, um, you know, I think there's really shows up making a bunch of plays. Uh, there's certainly a window for that to occur when, when someone really does something maybe they hadn't shown yet and, and you see a, a flash of what they're capable of. That does happen. It does help. Uh, the most famous one, obviously, is that Terrell Davis – uh, runs down on that kickoff in Japan and makes a hell of a hit, and all of a sudden everybody wakes up like, "Oh man, this this guy could be a pretty good player." Um, so that does happen. It's not out of the question. So um, we definitely encourage guys to, you know, put your best foot forward and play as well as you can because those things do happen, and it does matter if you put it on tape in a game. Do you consider Harris a distinctive kick returner, or, or not quite that level yet? Um, yeah, I think he got to earn that right. You know, I don't know that he's earned that yet, but um, I liked what I've seen from him as a returner. He's done some really good things, uh, but I, I would say to, to label him as anything other than just trying to make our team is probably uh, premature. So, uh, like what I've seen, but you know, hasn't hasn't been out there for the last few days either. So that doesn't help. Um, but been solid. When you talk about offensive linemen getting chemistry with one another, like like Raiden's and, mm -hmm. and NTF on the right. Is it mainly timing uh, or anticipation of what, what the others do? What, what are some of the all of, all of it? Chemistry? All of it. The communication part's really big. Um, communicating what you're seeing and, and and guards, centers and guards, and guards and tackles that play together. Um, there's sort of a, a, a sense of what's going to happen. They they play enough together. They feel whether they're snapping off a stunt or they're making a call that sometimes they don't get the call out and the defense is moving. It's those things um, where the chemistry and communication really come into play and, and playing together for a long period of time um, benefits you because you just have a, a great understanding of what the guy next to you is doing. Um, so that's, that's probably the biggest difference. I mean, guys, you can certainly play together and, and not have it, but there's a benefit to the continuity of spending a lot of time playing together um, in that regard, where you just understand what's happening with the other person. There's not a lot of communication that has to happen. You just know because you played with them for so long. How do you think? How do you think the guys like the surprise with Jelly Roll yesterday? And, and how do you think Devondre did sing alongside him? <laughs> Man, that was that was a cool moment. I think um, I love. First of all, I love Jelly Roll's music. That's the first thing. I, it is, he was everything I was hoping he would be when I met him in person. And uh, I don't think I think Devondre said it before, but he's a huge country music fan. And so like that was a big big moment for him. Like he loves. Jelly Roll, and it was like really cool uh, for him to be able to go up there and, and sing. And when uh, Tavandre, he, he took kind of, which, which song did you want me to sing? And Tavandre raised his hand, he called on him, and he told him he wanted to sing Save Me, and, and he goes, why don't you come up and sing with me? And so I think that was like a, that was a really cool moment for, for Tavandre. He came up afterward and he, he said thanks, that was really cool, I appreciate him coming in here. But I thought his message to our team was fantastic. Um, just being a Titans fan for as long as he has and what the team means to him uh, and the community here. Uh, was really cool to hear. I think it was cool for our players to hear, um, you know, just how much that that the team itself has meant to him um, and how much of a fan he is. So awesome experience. I don't know if I'll be able to top that team meeting. Um, that was really cool. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like it was what I was born to do. Um, you know, it's part of the linebacker position. Uh, just being able to, you know, get everybody lined up, being able to be that guy to kind of, you know, tell everybody what to do. Um, and so, you know, I take tremendous responsibility in that. Um, just trying to, you know, help everybody be one step ahead in the play, one step ahead of the motion, um, different things like that. So, yeah. Before camp started, you know, there was a, a big to do about who would be the green dot where. And here it was, you were probably the guy all along. You ever, I like, think about that and see what, what was being said and kind of laugh at uh, I mean, honestly, man, I, I really don't give a about what anybody says outside of this building. So, I mean, I, that's 
that's just just as true as who I am. So that's just that's just it. So you know, I focus coming in every day, trying to you know be with my teammates, make this defense as best as it possibly can be, achieving our goals, and anything outside of that, I don't care about. Most about the, the scheme uh, under under Denard. Yeah, um, I think you know we're extremely aggressive. Um, I love that. I love the way he he calls it. Um, he calls it aggressive. Um, and so um, yeah, I think that that definitely plays into my strengths. Um, it plays into a lot of guys on this defense strengths. Um, and you know, it's just it's a, a, a fun defense to play in. I think you know we we have a lot of stuff in. Um, so you know, no matter what what comes out there, we have I have an answer for it. Be built on or maybe go differently compared to that first preseason game when you guys are out there for those couple of drives. Sunday. Yeah, um, just just continue to just just get in the groove of, of what we what we what we do. You know, you know, on a play in play out basis. You know, obviously that was that was a small little snippet. Um, you know, honestly, I, I really want to go back out there again um, and just keep going. Um, but you know, it's part of the game. Sometimes you have ups, sometimes you have downs, but you just got to stay the course. And I think for us in that moment, you know, obviously if that was a real game, you know, we'd be going out there. You know. Staying the course and going out there and getting a stop, or getting a stop, our first stop um, after that first drive. So, um, yeah, it's just it's just being able to you know obviously preseason is being able to look at the film, see what we where we can get better. Um, but you know this whole training camp for us has been about us just getting better every day, and I feel like you know we've done that up to this point. Jerry was talking about you. He said he's our leader. What does it feel like for a, a guy with his experience uh, to to be talking about you that way already? Uh, you know I. You know, being a leader is something that I don't take lightly. Um, you know, obviously, you know, to, to lead, you know, you have to have people that, that you know, choose you to be that person. And I think, you know, for me, it's a, it's a tremendous honor that they, that they see me in that way um, to be able to go out there and, you know, help guys out. Um, and I think for me, um, it's just trying to come in every day and set the example. Um, and not try to be perfect, but coming in every day, trying to trying to be one percent better. Coming in every day with the mindset of having something to prove, because ultimately, I feel like you know, on this defense, that's that's the culture that we're trying to build. Um, is to be the best defense in the league and coming out here prove it um, every chance we get on the grass. And so I think you know, just coming out here with that mindset um, is what I try to do, um, and just try to rally the guys around me. Who were the guys maybe that showed you the way when you first came in the league, and how much did you maybe take lessons from that that helped you today? Oh yeah, man. It's, I mean, it's. A handful of guys, but um, you know, Khalil Mack was a guy. Um, just you know, he came in my my third year, um, and just watching the way he led, um, and the way he you know rallied the guys and got around the guys, and and just he was just a tremendous leader and somebody you know I I looked up to Khalil, you know, when I was in elementary, middle school, um, and so being able to play with him, seeing, being able to see how he leads, um, stuff like that, you know, guys like you know Derwin James. Um, you know, guys like uh, Joey, but you know, that's just just a handful of guys that you know I've seen kind of like how how things go, and obviously I'm going into my fifth season, so I kind of know, you know, the the ups and downs of what comes with an NFL season, and being able to just navigate that and try to keep guys on the right track. Is it hard? Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah. How refreshing has it been to come where a staff kind of puts that confidence into you to let you play your game? How's that helped your play? And I feel like you're always having fun out there too, which yeah. can't be taken for granted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just try to go out there and just be the best me. But um, you know, you know, having people that believe in you, um, you know, for me, is something that I take to heart. Um, and you know, I, I don't ever want to let those guys down because they believe everything in me. And so, um, you know, I'm going out there to prove prove them right. And it's not not necessarily like proving people wrong, but it's proving the people that believe in me right. Um, and so, you know, I definitely had that that boulder on my shoulder to go out there and, and, and do that for for not just me, but everybody that that believes in me um, and just going out there and just, you know, being the best that we can be. So back, back to the leadership thing, coming in and being a new player on a team, is it harder to kind of grasp <laughs> that leadership role? Uh, I wouldn't say no. Um, you know, I feel like when when I when I came in, you know, they kind of told me, you know, just to come in and be myself um, and, you know, don't be scared to step on nobody's toes. And I feel like, you know, that's that's always been kind of like my mindset. Um, and so, you know, I just came in and just, you know, try to set, set the tone, set the wave of, of how things should be done. Because I feel like, you know, obviously going into my fifth year, I've seen how things should be done at a high level, seen how things um, should be done to be able to, you know, achieve what we want to achieve. And so just coming in and try to be that guy in the middle. Um, and just, you know, everybody feel that. And I feel like, you know, when you come in, you do that. 
um, you know, your presence gets felt. And so I just ultimately feel like, you know, that's, that was my mindset. Just, I just wanted people to feel my presence. Callahan talked about uh, wanting to see a little more from the offense and some of those drills today, but at the same time, having to be happy with what he sees from the defense when you guys win those reps. Um, what's that like for you? Do you revel at all in kind of showing the offensive coach, hey, this is what we're coming out here to do? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, every time we step on the field, it's it defend every blade of grass, um, and that's the mindset. Um, and so no matter what they do, um, you know, for us, we always say it's about us and going out there and executing our calls. And so um, that's the standard. And, and the standard is the standard, and nobody's wavering for that. And so I feel like, you know, just, especially on our side of the ball, our coaches, you know, hold us to that standard. Um, and it's the standard. You know, either you, you get with it or you get lost. And so, you know, I, I kind of feel like, you know, you know, obviously the offense wants to have success, but but our standard is our standard. And, you know, we, we come out here to, to lead this team. So that success and you start building momentum and that's without guys like Cheeto or Legarius out on the field and I mean these are veteran players that right. you've seen their game I guess how excited does, do you get about the idea of all 11 being together in this defense? Uh, it's extremely exciting um, you know we know we got all the pieces um, it's just a matter of let's just focus in on the details every day and that's that's really what the challenge is it's just going to be coming in every day not getting tired of it not getting uh, lazy with it, the details, and just coming in every day trying to get better. And so, um, you know, everybody's chasing that to be the best. Um, we know we have we have the ability to be the best in that room. Um, and so it's just a matter of us just coming in every day, living up to it. What, uh, what challenges does it present to you as that defensive communicator if there's guys who are, you know, coming in with this group right week one's the first time maybe all 11 play together? Like, what do you have to do differently knowing that some players haven't gotten the chance to be out here in training camp? Well, it's not, it's not much that you have to do differently. It's not like those guys aren't, aren't in the building, aren't in the meetings, um, aren't, aren't with us. You know, obviously, you know, injuries happen, um, and guys have to be able to take care of their bodies to be able to get back to play um, when we need them to play. But as far as Cheeto and LJ, you know, the take is the take. We know those guys are hell of a players. Um, we know when they come back, we know what they're going to provide to this defense. Um, and so as soon as they get back, it's, it's going to be, you know, like, like the, the gang is all back together and we're ready to roll. So that's, that's what it is. It's not really worried about, you know, somebody not being here, not being here, because at the end of the day, everybody's in the meeting every day. Um, we're having those conversations and going through it, watching film together and just trying to get better. Jelly Roll coming to the door yesterday. How did you think Devondre did singing with him? Oh, man, that was hilarious. Um, it was definitely a good moment for the team. Um, T-Sweat can't sing, but, <laughs> but it was definitely a fun moment for sure.